All right, welcome to episode number four from this series from chapter 2A. And in this episode, we're going to start to learn about the biomolecules. Specifically, we're going to learn about carbohydrates. Now, as you can see on your screen, that there are four kinds of biomolecules. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And this episode is obviously going to focus on the carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates are a compound that made out of only three different atoms. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And if you look at the word carbohydrate, it's really telling you what it's made out of. Carbo refers to carbon, and the hydrate refers to water. Now remember the chemical formula of water, H2O. Two hydrogens for every oxygen. And if you look back up here in red, if you look at the ratio of a carbohydrate, a one to two to one ratio, one carbon for every two hydrogens for every one oxygen. One to two to one ratio. All right, so we have a type of sugar in here called a glucose. All sugars end with the suffix O-S-E, that stands for sugar. Uh, glucose is the type of sugar that your cells use to get energy. It has a chemical formula of C6H12O6, one to two to one ratio. Now, if you can remember the last episode where we talked about macromolecules and the chemical process that builds macromolecules, dehydration synthesis, and hydrolysis, we're going to see the same thing in every single one of these biomolecules. Now remember, a macromolecule or a polymer is made up of monomers, a single part that will help build this. The monomer of a sugar is called a monosaccharide. Mono means one, just like it did in monomer, but saccharide is a word that means sugar. All right? So monosaccharide is a single sugar or a simple sugar. Now remember, once again, all sugars will end in O-S-E. Think of glucose which is cell sugar, fructose, fruit sugar, lactose, milk sugar, and sucrose, which is table sugar, which used to make Kool-Aid. All right, a disaccharide, that prefix di, I'm going to write that out here for you. Di, that's simply a word that means two. Think of dimer. So this would be two monosaccharides connected together. This is done through a process called polymerization, Remember, polymerization is also known as dehydration synthesis. And dehydration synthesis is, once again, a word that's trying to tell you what's going on. Dehydration means to take out the water. Synthesis means to make. So when you take out the water, two things are going to be put together. Sucrose is a disaccharide. Now here's a picture that shows you how a disaccharide is made through dehydration synthesis, and it also shows you uh, dehydration synthesis of a second type of disaccharide. All right, so what we have here is maltose. Maltose is the type of sugar that you're going to find in malt. So think of malted milk balls like Whoppers. Also think of like a chocolate malt that you can get at an ice cream store. Uh, mal or maltose is made out of one glucose connected to another glucose. Now remember, dehydration synthesis means to take away water. So we're going to use this hydroxyl group off of that glucose and the H off of another hydroxyl group. That's going to be H2O. There's your water you took out, remember, dehydration. And what happens is you're going to make this bond right here which has a fancy name of 1,4-glycosidic linkage. Everybody knows that, right? Duh. Now remember, this is, represents stored energy. Because what we did here is, whoops, let me spell energy correctly, is remember, we did an anabolic process. Remember, ana builds, and that takes energy. Sucrose down here is a disaccharide that's made out of glucose and fructose, which is fruit sugar, but it works just the same way. Take the OH group off of one, take the H off another, there's the water you took out, and there's the stored energy. And once again, we have done an anabolic process. We have built something through a process called dehydration synthesis. Just to, basically, it's the exact same thing we learned on the previous ex episode. Take away the water to build something. Polysaccharides, remember poly means many, 
So this would be three or four more, or something to write, three or more monosaccharides joined together. This is all done through a process of polymerization, also known as dehydration synthesis. Starch is a molecule that is a polymer, or I'm sorry, a polysaccharide, as you can see here. One, two, three, four, five glucose molecules hooked together. In fact, starch is a really, really long molecule. You could have hundreds of these glucose molecules hooked together, and that's what starch is. Now, uh, functions of carbohydrates, there are three of them. As you can see there, they are in color. You want to make sure that you know those, okay? The main source of energy is I'm sorry, rephrase this. The main source of energy for cells are carbohydrates. So the number one function of a carbohydrate is a primary source of energy. The second thing that carbohydrates can be used for is energy storage. And you're going to see this mainly in plants. Plants use starch as energy storage. Plants don't produce fat like animals do. They have to store it in starch. So think of any kind of root vegetable, uh, beets, potatoes, um, Carrots, those are all going to have a lot of starch in them. Uh, now, in animals, such as ourselves, <clears throat> we, can score, we can store a little bit of energy in the form of glycogen, and glycogen is also known as animal starch. We store a little bit of that in our liver, but for most animals, they're going to store energy in the form of a lipid called fat. And finally, the third uh, function of a carbohydrate is for structure and support. Plant cell walls are made out of a carbohydrate called cellulose. Cellulose is what paper is made out of. It's also what's wood made out of. The exoskeleton of insects and crabs are made out of a carbohydrate called chitin. Uh, like when you step on a bug and you hear the crunch, that hard outer shell, the chitin, that is breaking. Okay, so let's remember this. Three functions of carbohydrates, primary energy source, energy storage, and structure and make sure that you know that when starch is used when glycogen is used make sure you know what cellulose is and make sure you know what chitin does okay and i also want you to remember that the primary source of energy for all cells is going to be glucose and all sugars in in an ose now the one thing i forgot to cover when i went i'm gonna actually i want to make this go backwards so let's get rid of that you see this bond right down here on this starch? If we want to break this bond and release energy, God, I can't spell release, and release some energy, I bet you know what process that's going to be. That releasing that energy is going to be done through hydrolysis like we learned on the previous episode. Okay, And when you do hydrolysis, you're doing a catabolic reaction. So remember, Anna builds, that takes energy, that's dehydration synthesis, and hydrolysis breaks, using water to break something, that's a catabolic reaction, and that releases energy. All right, we're going to stop this episode right here. Uh, if you have any questions, don't forget, uh, don't forget to ask myself or your own teacher, but until the next episode, we're going to catch you on the flip side.